Hey, 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 hey. How we doing? Welcome back. We are back for another week. Hacking some Haskell. Let's see. Update. Agency. Friend. Uh, we launched Postgres Replicant on Hackage. We need more downloads, friends. It's out in the world. Try it out. Tell me what you build with it or what you would like to build with it or what you would like to see built. Um, you know, I've got some ideas for stuff I want to build with this, uh, but it's pretty, pretty open-ended from here. I noticed slightly after publishing it though, that, uh, we left the queue module in there, even though it's not used, but it's on Hackage now, so you can start a Haskell project with Replicant. I think I want to be able to add some new features to this a little bit later on the next release. But I think we're going to take another little break from it and just do some, some mucking around uh, in Haskell today. One of these days, I kind of feel like I want to do like a more tutorial-ish type thing or, or something like that. Um, but I was thinking maybe we can, I want to learn some linear types. So I want to try that out and maybe we could just do some, finish that Haskell problem we were working on last week, the, the challenge there. So that's what I got. I'm going to hack on tonight. Probably that. Try out some linear types, see if we can figure that out and how they work. So that's a pretty new feature. It was just introduced in uh, GHC 9. Most, one of the most recent ones that just went into release. Release, so it's like part of the like, it's a thing now. Um, so it's kind of cool. It promises a lot of cool stuff. Like being able to manage resources with a bracket. So that's pretty cool. And also being able to do safe update in place stuff like zero copy and uh, smaller data structures than your immutable cousins. So you should learn how to, how to, how to use it. For now though, let's, uh, let's finish up that problem we were working on last week. The bus problem, as I recall. Right. Haskell language server is now uh, messing with me here. Cool, cool. Yes. So this was, uh, I think we had this pretty much right. Or at least we had the example down. Fourteen was it? Day thirteen? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's whip that into our REPL. Uh we can import qualified data list. Empty. Ends fine. Yeah. Soonest bus from time. So our time in the example was 939. And our list was bus 713. From list. Bus seven, bus thirteen, 
59, 31, and 19. There we go. And that should give us the answer of 59. Plus number 59. And the time that we get plus 59 at, which is 954, 944, 54. Uh, so then we need to calculate the number of minutes we'd have to wait before it departs. Multiplying that bus ID <clears throat> by the number we have to wait. Okay. So that would be part one solution. So we get the, that, that, and then we just get an end back. Uh, actually, let's do that differently. I don't want to repeat the arguments. Let's do that as a bus and int, which is going to be time, and get the int back. Let's just pattern match out the bus and the argument. This is pretty... Oh, we need the start time as well. Right. So it was time minus start. Multiply that by the bus ID. is our solution for that. So let's uncurry a part one solution. 939, which is our start time. The rest of the function can be uncurried to the uh, arguments given it this. And that gets us 295, yeah. So if you haven't seen uncurry before, uh, it can be pretty handy for when you're working with tuples to pass them to uh, function. That's its type there. It takes a function a, b to c, and it basically plops in the a and b into the first two positions of the argument, so you get a c back. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, so then we need the answer for our input. Uh, so we need to do the parsing, I guess. So let's look at doing the parsing. How did I do it for other days? I did it like a parse module. Okay. Uh, okay, dokey. I think we used Adel Parsec. That's a text dot Adel Parsec. Been a while. In a while. Parse. Yeah, data dot oops, sorry, sick dot text. Okay, cool. That is the one. Let's open our file. Twenty twenty, day thirteen. So if you really want to know, like, a good, a fair amount of Haskell, if you're, like, just a beginner or getting the end of your beginner stuff, going through Advent, 
it's pretty useful. Uh, even if you're not, like, just don't worry about doing it fast or anything or whatever. Just take what you know, because once you've got functors and applicative and a couple of, and maybe even a smidgen of monad down, those type classes, you can get by pretty easily with Addo Parsec and just getting comfortable with it. Just parsing different kinds of data, all that stuff is just pretty useful. Uh, are we going to do a whole lot of that here, or would it be easier? This looks like just two lines to kind of cheese a little bit on the parsing. It might be easier just to cheese the input on this one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll take the, oh, how did I, gosh, it's, all, it's like completely gone into my head. How did I structure this stuff before? Yeah, I just do parse input, okay. Text. Okay. So at a high level, I just, I do the loading of the text into a giant ball of text somewhere else, I guess, probably in the solution file. <laughs> And then here we're going to give back, what, uh, a tuple of an integer and a list of, a non-empty list of plus. Now this could, like for any arbitrary input, so to speak, it'd be pretty hard to parse on empty bus because we'd be throwing errors all over the place if there were no buses to parse. Parsing failed. I don't think we're going to get that on our input, obviously, because ours is fixed. Something to consider. Uh, we're going to cheese this a little bit and just let it throw an exception if that was a thing. So we'll import this. This library likes to be imported qualified. So we'll do that. That will satisfy that. Now, the first thing we're going to do with the text is oh, we're going to need to import text. Qualified data that text. Oh, I don't like qualified after. Sorry, I like qualified before. And you need to import that. And I also need the bus. Advent dot twenty twenty J thirteen. Yeah. Should be. Why are you not liking? Ah, you just don't know where it is. That's fine. It's there. Trust me. Okay. Uh, so the first thing we can do with this is lines. That'll give us back a list of the two lines. We only have two lines in this file. So the head of that is gonna be our integer. So let's pull this, pull these lines into our tuple and we'll continue parsing it. Uh, so then, uh, how can we do that? I don't know if there's a function for this, so I'm going to call it first two, two tuple, something else. And we'll define that down here. Uh, 
and that'll be a function like this. Again, we shouldn't get the empty list. Uh, so this is kind of dirty, dirty parsing. But who says you can't do a little dirty Haskell once in a while? You know what I'm saying? Why not? If we only have one element, doesn't matter what it is. We'll break that as well. Otherwise, we've got and anything else we don't really care about. I'm just going to tuple those up. Cool. Then our next stage in our journey is to buy map our parsers over our input. I think that's in data dot either. Oh, it doesn't have buy map. What? Oh, data.buy functor. Okay. My bad. Is it by functor lower? I guess so. Cool. Buy map. Mm. Uh -oh. I don't know why the Haskell language server wants to use that directory so badly, but it keeps asking me, do you want to watch all files and projects? Heck no. Cool. Now just tell me what type of this hole is. Well, there's a fa there's another way we could do the backup way if it's not gonna tell us. Fast uh, file watch. There we go. So that's an A0 to B0. What's this one here? Oh, did I not get the right type for Tmap lines. Could be. Could be, could be, could be. Squeak. I should get a list of text. that I've got by map wrong maybe Ooh, that's much better look at those inline type errors that's much much better 
but I don't think those are coming from LSP at this point. Mm hmm. Data dot functor. What is a type of biomap? Oh, right. I need two functions in there. Yes, yes. One for each side. That was my problem. Cool. Two holes. All right, so for this one, we just need to give uh, an integer. Um, a way to parse uh, text to an integer. And I think there's a function in here. Data.text.read, I think it is. Is the package. I think that's just in base. Oh, it's in the text package, sorry. Cool, cool, cool. So let us do that. Import qualified data dot text dot read t. We will do. What do we need? T dot decimal yeah that should be fine and then we just need to take the right of the the right side of that That uh, should be either string integer text to just int. That's the one I want. So I'm just giving the type int there because it was de defaulting to integer. So that would just be kind of annoying. So I'm going to go there and then this is probably where I want data dot either. And from right. Um, mm, no, let's let's make the type of this either as well. That way, if we fail at any point in time, like when we're parsing this integer here. Could do that so let us what should I do? What should I do here? Let's um uh, 
Text Rest. That's going to be a couple of text and text that we need to parse and return either. Oh, we need um, just either text, an error string, or int not empty bus. We're going to use the do trick here. And then we're going to pull out the start text and bus text. So then from here, we'll do start. And that will be uh, t.read int of start text. And we want to take the first of that, I believe. Oh, sorry, not Tita read a decimal. Pop, 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 pop. Oh, it's going to return a string as an error. Okay, so we got to just turn that as a string. Means this needs to be a string. Okay. So start now is going to be the tuple of what we parsed. Right, it's going to still be the int text. So we probably just want to get the int part out. Okay, no, maybe never mind. It's okay. The second part we want to get is the bus text. Um, so the bus buses. This should be pretty straightforward. Uh, I think we should just be able to use data.text. Split on. There we are. And then map. Well, oh, those each of those could individually fail. So let's let's do that first. Split on the comma of bus text. Okay, we know. We know. Okay, so then we get a whole that's a list of texts to either string, whatever. So then we can we traverse or sequence. Need an applicative F. Hmm. And then uh, sequence. Some monad. Okay, so if I had a smart constructor that um, 
Well, first, actually, we have to parse all of these to numbers, don't we, for a bus? So... That is going to be... And then... What, what do we get? We get... Uh, oops, I didn't mean to do that way, I meant to do that. There we go. And it's even picking out valid full fits that probably makes sense for us. Is good so we'll just plunk that in there okay so then we just in this whole last hole we have to return either string tuple of into non-empty bus we got buses it's not quite what we want actually for buses That's a reader, though. I don't know if we get an F a functor instance for that, so we can go over this like this and reach inside there what we parse. Can we do that? It's on line 24. Uh, string either. Da da da, to either string that. Kind of a weird type. Yeah, let's leave it like that. So these buses are just the ones that actually worked and that we were able to parse an int on. So all the X's will just get thrown out because they'll all return left if we try to parse in the text.reads. So I think what we should be able to do is just do pure here uh, with a start. And uh, there's the first of start. And we're going to have to do something with buses, which is we're going to have to map over it with the function that is our constructor for bus composed with first over buses. And then we have to take that into non-empty. So that's where we're going to use end up on list and just potentially throw an exception. There. So if I grab my... I don't know what the path on this is, but... Let's just assume maybe it works. And implement part one. And now I have to look this up because I made a cool little prelude to make this faster, but I forget it. We're basically going to look like that. Right. 
Uh, read file. And then we're going to call, and we're going to import our own mod, parse, whatever function. This is going to be whatever. This is going to be a start and plus schedule. If I can actually write it, that'd be great. Okay. Right. Data text.io. Cool. What are we going to do first with our bus schedule and our start is we're going to call our function, right? From bus. So we're going to need to import bus. And to do. We can just call. We get on curry. Just yeah, uncurry the soonest bust from time or that. That leaves us with a whole uh, tuple bus int to IO. Actually, yeah, we need to we need to pull out the the tuple of results. Ah, that's fine. I can do it here, no problem. I don't have to destructure anything. Okay, so uh, we have the tuple there. The bus in here is the bus and the later time. So we're gonna just. Call part one solution as we did before with the first element of result, which is our start time. And that's going to be uncurry as well. Yeah, I'd probably put braces around. Seize around that. So that should give us our solution. And we just want to show that. So we'll show. And then... Put that into put sterling. Input does not start with a digit. So our parser didn't quite work. Uh, <laughs> Let's fix that. Right. Let me just do this. Uh, first input on input. Okay.
And that is because, let's call t.lines on input, see what we get. Uh, of course, I need to import that in. Qualify data.txt txt, and try that again. Okay. So the first one should parse fine. Right, that's a prelude thing. Uh, I'm going to import data dot list empty. Qualified, of course. Okay. That's good. It's probably not this one. Let's bring this one back. We'll add t dot decimal as an int top. So that did parse fine. Uh, maybe it's buses. We had the tail. Mixing types here. Uh, what do you want there? Let's pop and up tail in there. Okay, that's the second element. N dot head. That's not working either. What the heck's going on here? Yeah. The heck, dude. Okay. Why do you think it's a list of text? What's the matter with you, GHC? What's going on? Chat, what's going on? Ah! <laughs> Oh, tail is turning is turning to a uh, list for some reason. I thought it would return another non-empty. Yeah, that's the problem. Okay, that's kind of annoying. Uh, 
Uh, is there a way to just unsafely get the first uh, element by indexing it or something? There is a plop plop. And plop plop. Can I use it with the parentheses? That's a parse error. That's kind of what I expected. Data dot list on empty. And let's wrap it in some parentheses. Oh, not the most, not, I'm not empty. Ugh. Yes, it is ambiguous. How do I unimport stuff from GHCI? It's on a module name or source file. Okay, cool. Oh my gosh. Okay. Fine. Let's do this this way. Just restart everything all over again. We're qualified data dot text io sorry I was ugh I'm gonna do it again don't I as T Okay Qualified data list. Or just, just the operators, fine. The bang bang. So, empty as n. Okay. Now, what do I get here? What the hell is going on with my GHC? Okay. I want that one. I want that one. That one. That. And that. Let me input again. And let's there. Yeesh. It gives us a function. 
I'll update the text because we want to. Do this. There we go. Okay, finally. Now. Split on. What does that give us? That gives us these, these cats here. Okay. And then what are we doing in our parser? We're splitting on the comma there. doing map we're doing that expression the map so let's do that here p dot decimal int all right so we get a bunch of lefts in there because it doesn't parse properly that's fine but if we sequence this okay Right, if any of these is a left, it's going to be a left. If we traverse... Traverse wants a function, doesn't it? Yeah, so maybe these aren't right. What we want, either of these is right. Maybe we just want um, from data dot either. I think has rights. So if we just do rights. Right, we just do rights. We just map first uh, bus. So first. I don't think we have the bus constructor, and so it's probably going to throw an error. Well, no, we do. There we go. That's better. So let's go fix that. It's not sequence. It's writes. And then we're going to... I don't think we need this. This will be a let. Okay. So now, now, now we should be good to go. Our input. Oh, I gotta get. Input back in scope. I reloaded things. Okay. Cool. Yes, that looks about right. Uh, yep. So let's load up the solution, run it. Okay, supposedly our solution is this. Gold star! Alright, there we go. Um, so what I was saying about parsing, though, and learning how to use the parser is totally true. Um, for this example, we didn't really use auto parsec all that much because the input is just really, really, really simple. Um, but it would have been like kind of overkill trying to trying to make a parser for it. But uh, if you look at my repo of my solutions, if you want to skip ahead at some point and figure that out, you can. But there are other solutions where the parsing is a little bit more interesting, uh, and it's okay to take your time with it. And, and write an actual parser with it. You could still write dirty parsers for some of them, maybe more of them than I have. I think this is the only time I haven't used auto parsec on a solution, so there's that. Um, but, you know, sometimes just quick and dirty blip works. So 
So let's go ahead and commit that. And then maybe let's play around with some linear Haskell. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, add. And push that up. Cool. Okay. Well, let's stop this here. Go to my projects, start. Do I have. I do GHC up. Yeah. What am I got right now, y'all? 884 and 810. So in order to use linear Haskell, I think we need the basically 9.0.1, which is the current latest that has it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. 9.0.1. Uh, and this time we'll just use a cabal project instead of a stack, just for mucking around. Uh, the only reason why is that I'm not entirely certain that stack has an LTS yet with this version of GHC and the version of the library I'm thinking of using for our base. Yet. And one thing I would love, 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 love if any uh, stack contributors are watching or follow these and catch the videos on demand. Love for stack to have a command for installing H the matching HLS to the uh, to the LTS to the resolver. I would love that. Because right now I have this kind of janky way No, my internet. Okay. My internet may or may not be back. Uh, okay, it still says we're connected. Still says I'm live. Tell me, chat. Are you there? Might have just been installing GHC. <laughs> okay. Uh, GHC, I think it's, or GHC up. Set. 9.0.1. Okay. Cool. Uh, so it should be this. Still set it successfully, so that's good. Okay, cool. Uh, let's make a directory for our little adventure. Linear adventure. Oh. Yep. Wall init. Cool. So this is a cabal file. I'm not a huge fan of the format. I find it very confusing, but... A lot of people who have been in Haskell for a lot longer than I have swear by it, and probably right. No, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a heathen. I like the YAML files. Anyways, doesn't matter. We have linear base. That's going to be our base library that we're going to use with our experimentation today. Linear basis from Twig. 
while it's building. Let's go take a peep at that. It's just a handy base library full of data structures that have been linearized. And the reason for that is because a lot of the base prelude uh, won't work with a lot of linear functions. So anywhere you have a linear arrow in there, you're basically going to get a lot of uh, conflicting error messages, type errors, and things like that. Uh, so what I mean by that is you get these new arrows here. Linear arrows. And I am not super versed in linear types and how it works. We're going to learn uh, by doing and just farting around with it. And the gist of it, though, as I understand it, is that uh, this basically says that A will be used at least once, or exactly once. Or they, I think they use the word consumed once. Um, so it introduces this idea of multiplicities. Everything else is unrestricted. So if you have regular arrow, it's many, can be used many times. And the goal of that, there's two, kind of two goals to it, I think. One of them is for resources. Uh, you can potentially write uh, code that's fairly straightforward that can safely use things like file handles and sockets and pointers and pass them around. And the type checker will make sure that they get used appropriately. Um, and the other thing we could use it for is um, safe mutate in place type data structures. So mutable vectors and things like that. Uh, we can write simpler functions that just operate over those without having to use something like the ST monad, which is what you would typically do for, or use for doing those kinds of things. I don't know why the link here didn't work though. That's kind of unfortunate, but it probably is because this is all from their read file, uh, which probably has the appropriate links there. Cool, 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 cool. So yeah, they have this, they introduced this new type wrapper called er, which is unrestricted value. So this is returning an unrestricted value of B, which means that when it gets returned, any you can pass it around like any other times, like any other value in Haskell when you unwrap it. Uh, and then we, this linear arrow makes sure that anything that goes in gets used on those restrictions is the gist of it, I think. There are some caveats. Cool. So we got linear base. I was thinking maybe we could mess around with some mutable stuff. Get up here away. So let's go close up some of the other things that we're working on. Da -da. Close down that. Close down you, you and you. You just the essentials. Yes. Okay. And we'll go to main here. Okay. 
already we can see HHC ID is complaining because it's compiled against 8.8.4. Right, this is one of the things that's going to get kind of annoying with managing multiple projects if you're doing that. So you have to do that. Yeah. So let's move to see if we can do that. Install. I think it's HLS. It's just the command. I'm sure let's tell the nice 1.2. I haven't tried 1.2 out yet. It's supposedly much, much better. Yeah. Oh, linear prelude. We import data prelude.linear. And then we can get things like um, data.functor.linear. We can get data.vector.mutable. Not linear, I think. Cool, 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 cool. So let's can I just restart my LSP server from here. And use the better point two. Okay, cool. Maybe it's working now. Maybe it's not. Whatever. So, to do, to do. Let us build. I think it's Cabal build is the command. That works fine. Okay, so we get uh, mutable linear vectors. Let's try something really, really simple. Let's just try swap. Write our own version of swap. Right. What will swap do? Swap, let's just swap the values at two indices in place by mutating, uh, mutating the vector. We'll just, we may have to use an intermediate value, but hopefully we can write it like something like this. And then we got to do our multiplicity arrow. That's going to be really fun to type. I think that's what I want. Oh, we gotta turn on the language extension, of course. Any of your types. Okay. Seems to work. All right, so what do we do when we swap? We need our uh, left index, pull those into scope, our right index, just convention, and our vector. Okay, I'm kind of thing missing already, like automatic rebuilding because LSP isn't working here. Okay, so this is kind of a new type error. 
I guess we get when we start using linear types. Uh, we start seeing stuff like this. Couldn't match type many with one. Uh, arising from multiplicity of vec. I don't exactly know what that means yet. Is there... The GHC manual is usually a good place to look. Uh, for documentation on stuff. So a function f is linear if, when its result is consumed exactly once, then its argument is consumed exactly once. Intuitively, it means that in every branch of the definition of f, its argument x must be used exactly once, which can be done by returning x unmodified, passing x to a linear function, pattern matching on x, and using each argument exactly once in the same fashion calling it as a function and using the result exactly once in the same fashion. Okay, so maybe we're getting that error right now because we're, we haven't used x yet in one of these ways. Vec. So to allow a uniform handling of linear a to b and unrestricted a to b functions, there's a new function type percent m to b here m is a kind of multiplicity we have one or many so let's just kind of map to one like that okay we say the variable is multiplicity is constrained is unrestricted Okay. And so linear won't work with inference. It's good to know. Some limitations, designer for the reason. Okay, there's not a whole lot of documentation yet, even in the GHC manual. So we're kind of, we're just going to be poking around for a bit, I guess, and just trying to figure this out. Okay, so first things hoist. We need to get an intermediate. If we're going to swap these two, the values of these two indices, um, we're going to end up replacing one. So we'll need a temporary variable to store one of them. In. And this is where I guess we will end up using vec. So maybe that type error will go away. Um, so let's... I kind of imported this on qualified. I'm not sure if we're supposed to import it qualified. It might follow the conventions that like the containers library and stuff use. We'll probably get an error about that in a minute. So normally this would be... like They usually... Have some kind of bang bang operator there. A bang colon. A bang question. Like maybe it's there because if we choose something out of bounds, bang bang would make it an exception. Or this would make it safe. Uh, we could use guards to prove that it's safe to ourselves. And maybe to our readers, these indices are within the bounds of vector. What would that look like? Left index is greater than zero. And right index is greater than zero. Or greater than or equal to zero, sorry. And left index is less than... 
the size of Vec. And right index is less than the size of Vec. Otherwise, we do this. Okay. Yeah, so another thing with this library looks like we need to hide the default prelude with no implicit prelude. Because it linearizes, linearizes, linearizes a lot of the prelude functions that we import kind of explicitly here. Uh, so this is still kind of throwing a bunch of stuff. We're still getting this many with one thing. Mm. Because these are linear linearized. Hmm, interesting. It's pretty rigid. What does this mean? So I'm guessing because we still haven't used VEC yet, but we got some type errors on size as well, our use of size as well in our guard here. And I guess that's because size returns this tuple of er int vector a in the second argument of this. So how do I fix that? Linear base, how do I fix that? Is there a way for me to construct an er? Or to de-er that thing? <laughs> Please, that's a YouTube video. Oh, no. No. Well, there's some slides. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so normally you do this kind of stuff in ST, right? It's a pretty complicated example for slides, jeez. <laughs> Nonlinear. That must have been some prior version of the syntax. Well, it looks like that's out of date. Linear base 
documenty show. Let's look at good examples. Oh, this is a nice little file. I like this. So that's the linear identity. All right, that fits with this here, just returning X on modified. We could probably make our function do that as type check as well. I guess by just returning VEC and ignoring our arguments, right? Which isn't the right thing, but as long as well, we could just do it like this. Okay, that worked. Not the right function, but okay, cool. Um, so there's that. And then you swap on tuples. Okay, that's a, probably a simpler example. But with a nonlinear function, this is not the case. A nonlinear function, f, x, y, b, does not have to use x and y linearly. Yeah, and so here, since tuple x, y was the first input to linear swap, which is a linear function, the components x, y must be used linearly. Indeed, we see the X and Y are each used exactly once. Okay. So maybe that's why our version of swap wasn't working with the guards, because we were using size more than once. And we can only touch VEC once. Nonlinear subsume. This function is not linear on its argument and in fact should not have a linear arrow. If it did, this file would not compile. Well, the first argument would be linear and this constructor is linear on both components. So a linear tuple looks, constructor looks like that. Which means that A must be used once and B must be used once. We can't ignore B. And the body of the function A is used twice and B is used zero times. Yeah, so, okay. So it means we can't, we probably can't use VEC twice. Interesting, interesting. So uh, let's look at their... Uh, not prelude linear... Uh, vector. We get empty constant from list. We can set modify. I wonder if we can compose this. Okay, well, let's look at the Haddox for this then. That's easier to navigate. Linear base. Where are you?
cool, cool, cool. So empty, is it empty or not? Constant from list. Mutators. So what does modify return for us? Right, it takes the A and turns it into function A and a tuple A to B. So it turns, it gives us er B. And the vectors of A's. So I guess the value at that thing and the vector itself. So if we call modify with this, that's pretty useful because that means um, by the lambda abstraction we should be able to pull we don't really need to have the temp variable like I was going for with a let binding um, we could put vector vec in as our input here use it once into this and maybe we can comp continue composing this along by sending vector to another modify call that does our modification there let's see how that would work so left index right index let's bring those back into scope so we can only touch vec once we're going to modify back. Maybe that's the way it works. Hmm. I don't think so, actually, not now that I think about it. We have this A to AB, which means that I think A is going to be one of the elements of the vector is the input, the, probably the one at this index. We have to return a tuple of A and B. Yeah. So let's try that out on a very simple example. Uh, data dot vector mutable dot linear so we can go from lists three b is that and then we can modify Let's just return x and x, and zero, and get it from lists. Couldn't uh, match expected type vector b. From list is applied to too few arguments. Let's 
flip those around. I don't know. Is this the modifier? I think it is. Pow, pa bam, pa bam, pa bam. Modify. It is. Oh, weird. Okay. Oh, sorry. From list is not the the from list I'm used to. Uh, so V is expecting a function here. Interesting. Okay. Let's call it V prime. We're gonna put it into modify. That's gonna take some X. X and X at zero with V prime. And er is the other function that we want to do. So in that expression, we wanted an er B. I still don't know how to make an er. We do that. Maybe I can just use the data constructor. -er. Can't. All right. What is this? Hmm. Oh, there's some combinators for working with this stuff, too. Okay. Interesting. Learning more. So there's probably more in Linear Prelude that we should look at. Some basic type stuff, all linearized. List operations, functions on string, paste can put an output using er values. So it does expose the constructor. Okay. And integer flow, blah, blah, blah. School, rationale, quote, ram, mod. Okay. Uh, let's just try mucking around with, um, I guess this comes from prelude.linear. Says we should import that as qualified as vector. Let's do that. Qualified as V. Okay. So we do want to get 
say, the value at left index at a vector, right? Now, the example says we got to have this combinator and here takes some function that unpacks the result of this get with the er value there at that index, I suppose, is what it is, and a new vec. Okay. Now what do I get? I get this problem. There. This problem is probably name shadowing, maybe? Call this back prime then? Just to. Okay. Oh, yeah, because we haven't used it yet. So it's still a type error. Okay. Makes sense, I guess. It would be nice, I guess, with linear types if we had a hole here. We're kind of saying, like, I haven't used it yet. I know. Maybe don't make that a type error. I don't know. That seems like that would be nice to me. Anyway. Okay, so now we have a new vec prime and temp. So we've got, we got a copy. Temp is the copy of left index. In fact, we should probably just call it left index copy. Right. That is good. And now we can set the value Let's try it like this. Uh we don't set the value. at int sum a in vector a okay at left index we have to get some a out oh, okay so maybe we should get out hmm Um, so I'm just wondering how we can set the value of this vector. Well, maybe, maybe we just do another v dot get. I don't know. Uh, right index uh, on vec. Right index copy value or left index value. 
Hmm. It has to be Vec Prime. And we need a set at left index. I think it's, yeah, the index and then the vector. Oh, index and the value, then the vector. At left index, we set it to um, right index val. in vec prime prime and this should just get vec prime 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 oof it's getting a little nasty hopefully everything's type checking so far looks like it so now we're getting multiplicity type error on prime 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 I think we're v.set uh, right index, the left index val on vec prime prime prime. What's this one? Oh, uh, we don't need this anymore. Cool. Did I just write my first linear function? Um, let's let's try it out. So V uh, is not in scope anymore. So this from list ID. Let's try this again. What we were doing before here. The um, I think it was here, yeah. So we'll just unerr from lists and our function, just swap, and we'll swap zero and one. We actually just get a vector back, so we don't need to honor it, I guess. Hmm. Maybe we should make this an ur of vector A. Doesn't type check anymore. That won't work anymore. Nope. Okay. So that type checks, it returns a vector A. We consume the input vector. I assume that the vector A here would be of the appropriate multi multiple, but this type error is weird. So it's saying, expected a function like this but actually got a function like this okay uh let's look at oh um hmm let's look at from list i see yes 
Interesting. So how can I construct one in GHCI? Right, this example here works because there this function returns an error a bool. Maybe we can make it an ur of vector a. We just have to put the constructor in the right place. Does that work? Um, maybe not. Let's try this. Results. Sorry, and. Uh, Vita said it's applied to too many arguments. That's because I'm using the wrong thing, y'all. Seek. Hmm. That does that's all about. This is kind of a kind of a strange way to write programs. Hmm. Yeah, I guess, I don't know. How do we turn that into an error? Do we have to return it? Looks like we have to return it into an error. I don't have any other way of constructing a vector.
Yeah, there's got to be some way to turn it into a an ur, I guess. It's the only thing I can do with it, really. This compiles. Um, I don't know. What is this L seek? Doesn't really explain what it does. Is there something in Prelude Linear? Consumable, dupable. Hmm, these are all things we're going to have to learn. Dupe, dupe three, I'll seek. Get here. Hole with Irby. We don't really know what well, presumably it's our vector, this Irby. On Ur. that yeah this is uh, a little odd linear Haskell hmm I'm gonna have to tell you around with this a little more. Uh, it's a little weird. So we have a hole here that's our linear function. We get an er b as input. It's multiplicity type error. Uh, no real way to construct a linear vector to use with our perfectly cromulent swap function. Or at least cromulent as far as a type checker is concerned. Which is strange. Now it wants us like from list wants us to use something that returns an er. This gives us a strange type error. Well, not that strange, I guess. Couldn't match expect to type er vector a da 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 with type vector a in this mess.
And that. We do this. We get a hole. We want an ur of vector A. We have a vector A. But we have to use res somehow. Can I just do this? That's one of the rules, right? Except it's still giving me a type error, a multiplicity type error here. Now I thought that was that was allowed. Return x unmodified. Passing x to a linear function. Pattern matching on x and using each argument exactly once. Calling it as a function and using the result exactly once in the same fashion. So I guess er isn't quite good enough. There's got to be something we're missing here. Some kind of combinator like and but not. We want to return the result into an er of our linear function. Do, 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 do. Now, I haven't programmed a lot of Rust, but I, f I feel like this is kind of what, like, working with the borrow checkers a little bit like. Same kind of, like, mm. so ID. Maybe we can do ID. I don't know. Maybe. No, we'll probably ask linear ID. That would be just another thing. I think we want to see an er on the right-hand side of our arrow. So that's what we've been using. So our functions that return a linear consume it. I right, take a function. Da, da, da. Turns a B. Yeah, I don't know. Makes sense. No. It does not. That doesn't make sense. I can't do that because we haven't consumed it. That doesn't work. That wouldn't work either. That's kind of silly. Yeah, like... Uh, I don't know. Maybe we don't want to use and here, this final one. Maybe, what's the result of v.set?
uh, it's a vector A. Maybe we can, can we just do Ur here? I mean, we consume Vec prime prime prime. says we can't. So they can't there either. I don't know. Um, linear types. We're running out of time here, folks. So, my impression so far is that I don't know enough about this library that we're using and how to compose these together in a nice way. Uh, right now, I feel like I would rather just use the ST monad. Um, but maybe there's a way that they, this could change my mind. I'm sure there's, there's good things. I just got to dig into it more. Uh, like I, I'm kind of building an intuition for what is and isn't possible. Uh, I just it just requires like a very different style of programming, of course, and composing things together, which is a little bit odd. It feels a little odd anyway. We're starting to get like this kind of tree of it's kind of like slanting tree of code here, uh, which isn't too nice. It's all our mutations in it. So there's probably just like new patterns to learn. It's almost maybe even like a second language to be able to use this stuff. But the 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 goal, the holy grail here, is that we wouldn't that we could use like almost pure functions and just get these type errors. I think the type errors need a little bit of work, especially with typed holes and stuff, to make it a little bit more ergonomic understandable what's going on um so yeah i don't know uh the jury's still out the jury's still out on this but i think what i'd like to try and do is like say write like a in place reverse for a vector in st and then write it for linear and c and do like a code review or something of the the solutions there that might be fun but for now, we'll have to leave that until next week because we're out of time, like I was saying. So thanks for tuning in. May all your monads be free. May your types always check and be linear. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but take it easy. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.